Father. Can't speak for anybody else, but I need you. <clears throat> Just flesh. <laughs> but I want to be a vessel. So, I don't take this for granted. I don't take this season for granted. I don't take this series for granted. I don't take you for granted. I don't take your, your sheep for granted, your people. So please feel me. May I decrease. May you increase. Somebody who's mad about this series, please speak to them. Speak to me if I'm out of line. But we just want you magnified, not, not simply on a Sunday, but in our lives, across racial lines. We want to be, I guess what I'm praying is we want to be the church. So Holy Spirit, please do what I cannot do. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I don't know if you're old enough to remember. Anybody remember Sally Struthers? Yeah. Uh, I found out this week. I didn't know that she was Archie Bunker's daughter. I didn't know that. Sorry, I was watching the Jeffersons. <laughs> uh, Sally Struthers, one of the reasons... No, I, I never watched, was it All in the Family? Yes. I never watched that, but I know Sally Struthers. And the reason that I know Sally Struthers is because of the work that she did with Christian Children's Fund. Uh, when I would stay up late at night, I would see her on TV and in TV commercials. I would see her. I know Sally Struthers because of commercials like that. And I feel a little bit embarrassed, I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, years ago when those commercials would come on or those TV spots, sometimes they were extended. I was a Christian, but here's what I'd do when they would come on. I would take my remote. And I did it in a way that, you know, seemed spiritual. I just really want, wanted to watch BET. <laughs> You know, I, I, I didn't pretend that I was turning from her, but I just want to, uh, I forgot ESPN is on. I found a convenient excuse. Somebody say to turn the channel. Because I didn't want to see. Sometimes you don't really want to know certain things. Anybody other than me, you get a bill sometimes that come in and, and you just going to by faith believe God going to some way pay that bill. You figured if you don't open it, you ain't got to pay it. Anybody, anybody ever had a girlfriend or boyfriend? You knew they were through with you, really? That's, that's not in the notes. But you just kept hanging on because you ain't really want, you, your, your crew telling you he cheating. But you, anybody just, you, you ain't ready to change the channel yet. You want to stay there. If I'm these kids in these commercials, I'm thinking to a, 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 a church guy like Keith, what kind of love is that? My stomach is poking out. I got flies on my face and you watching Michael Jordan. What, what kind of love is that? You'd rather watch Prince play, play guitar on YouTube than watch me. What, what, what kind of love is that? It seems that your love, the type of love that, that you have, Mr. Church Man, it don't ever reach me. Your love seems to be in the abstract. <laughs> uh, I submit to you that when it comes to race, the church in America has a history of loving in the abstract. 
<laughs> we say we love people of different cultures, uh, 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 but we got a history of really, you know what? You can't see it. You can't see the love. I'm talking racially in the American church in the past and even So, <laughs> I'm just going to give you three things in the text. Y'all remember the text that, that Rob just read? Uh, that can help you to test yourself. Am I loving in the abstract? Uh, number one, number one, you'll know that you're loving in the abstract. Number one, if there is no touch, you love in an abstract. Anybody got a woman, any uh, in, in, in dude in here got a wife? Okay, I'm the only one. <laughs> Uh, uh, if you got a wife and you say you love her and you don't never touch her, <laughs> stay in the lane, Keith. I, I, I want to I touch my wife sometimes in love. Love touches. In the text, uh, Rob read it, but there's a smart aleck lawyer <laughs> trying to trap Jesus <laughs> must have been smoking crack <laughs> because you can't trap you can't trap the one who made the trap and he says to Jesus hey 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 what do I got to do to inherit eternal life probably don't really care <laughs> Jesus says, you know what's up. And, and the guy says, yeah, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength, mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus like, you got it, you got it. And then the dude wanted to find a loophole. He really wanted to be extra smart. He said, who is my neighbor? Who's my neighbor? Jesus goes on then to uh, speak what we call a parable. Jesus says, hey, there was this road, there was this man that went from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was a road that was traveled a lot. Uh, uh, and because it was traveled a lot, uh, just like today, uh, you had hoodlums, you had thieves, you had robbers. They would wait for you in the bush and they would carjack you or camel jack you or donkey jack you. And so they donkey jacked this man. He fell among thieves. He fell among people that didn't love him. And they beat him down. And left him wounded. And here's the part that saddens me. By the time they were finished, they bagged off and left him. Not dead. Half dead. I wish I had time to just preach that because in this room, it's some half dead people. <laughs> I ain't got time, but man, it's some of y'all sitting here. You wished April could sing to you every day because you half dead at work. You wished you could bring the band with you. Uh, 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 some of you are regretting work tomorrow. Some of you are regretting going home today. To your man that only wants to watch football and your marriage is half. They left him half dead. <laughs> uh, uh, and Jesus, he, he, he keeps telling the story. Here's the thing, when he tells the parable, what I didn't say is this. When he tells the parable, here's what he's doing to that lawyer. He busting him in the mouth. <laughs> racially Jesus says you want to be smart with me I'm going to bring race into it because <laughs> I know y'all church people y'all don't like to talk about race <laughs> I got two more weeks <laughs> so, so Jesus in the story, did y'all notice when, when Rob read it, he made the Samaritan the star. That, that's problematic because the Samaritans are hated by the Jews. They, they are looked at as devils, as half-breeds. So in the story, when the dude gets beaten down, here's the good news. He's left for half dead. Here comes a priest. Oh, he got his robe on. Jewish. 
And he comes and he sees this half dead guy. And the Bible says he changed channels. <laughs> he, he went by on the other side and said, I got something else to do. I got a revival to preach. I'm going to mega fast. <laughs> I wish I could help you. I send some of my deacons. <laughs> and the church, the church went by on the other side. Does that sound familiar to you when it comes to race? Oh, but the good news is once the priest was gone, there was a Levite that came. He had his keyboard with him or his acoustic guitar. Told him, our God is greater. Our God is stronger, but he looks at the half-dead man, does the same thing, changes the channel, and walks by on the other side. Anybody in here ever been half-dead and people left you? People won't return your call when you have dead. <laughs> everybody wanna be, everybody get the vapors when you make it. When I was trying to plant a church, nobody would meet with me. Nobody. No, now people get mad at me when I can't meet with them. I need you with me when I'm half dead. I need you with me. I'm sorry when my stuff stank. Sorry. Spit on you too. I'm spitting today. I am. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love you. <laughs> Guys, the religious people pass him by, Miss Barbara. They, they pass him by. <laughs> but Jesus, he goes and hits the lawyer in the mouth. Jesus brings a Samaritan into the story. The very person that they hate ethnically, the very person that the Jewish people hated. When people tell me don't preach about race, you ain't read your Bible. So the Samaritan comes, and I love the Samaritan. He stopped, <laughs> and he began to nurse this dude's wounds. He, I don't know how you travel with bandages, but he bandaged him up. My guess is he probably tore his shirt, tore his robe, tore his socks or something, and wrapped him up. Some people need to be wrapped up by us. <laughs> then he poured oil on him and wine. My favorite thing is he, he picked him up. I don't know if he put him on his back. I don't know how it worked. And he put him on his, his animal. And I always wonder, so does that mean he had to walk? But somebody say he carried him. <laughs> End of the story, he ends up being the hero. The one that you don't like racially, Jesus makes him the hero. But my point is this, he touched him. Yeah. If, if you love in the abstract, you don't touch people. It says in verse 34, so when he went to him, he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal. He brought him to an inn and took care of him. Hey, 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 if you just say that you care but you never carry somebody, you are loving in the abstract. When, who's the last person you carried? <laughs> Scriptures say he went by the Samaritan and the priest, or, or excuse me, the Levite and the priest, on the other side. See, when you touch somebody, the implication is this. You in proximity in the first place. I can't touch you from up there. Too many preachers do life up there. You gotta be in proximity to touch somebody. Hey, isn't it crazy that black folk and white folk in the church ain't been able to touch each other? Cause we in different buildings. And, 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 and there's a reason for that. It's called racism. We ain't done life together. That's crazy. People that's been washed in the blood of the lamb. You got to be close. Yeah. When I was in college, them seven years, <laughs> I was on the ice cube plan. <laughs> Googling. 
And, and, and I was in college, they made me an RA, a resident assistant. Isn't that crazy? I was in charge of the dormitory. <laughs> Look at your name and say, we got it crunk. I was at a Christian college, we got it Christian crunk. But, 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 but as a part of being an RA, uh, you've got to go to the RA retreat at the beginning of the year, corny stuff. But you got to go. And the retreat ended up being a pretty good retreat. And at the end of the retreat, the last night, they said, hey, partner with somebody and go out and just share with each other. Get you a partner. So I got a partner. We went out on the beach, Illinois Beach State Park, and we sat down. I didn't really know him. He didn't really know me. But here's the thing. He was white and I was black. That's important to me in this story because I do see color. You got on a nice red tie. It's red. I see it. And we're sitting on the beach, and we're sharing with each other. I don't remember what we shared. And then, I don't know who suggested it, uh, but somebody said, let's pray together. Let's close this thing out in prayer. I don't remember who suggested it. But I remember what I said. I said, okay, when I pray, I hold hands with the person I pray with. I grabbed his hands. He was a millionaire. His father was a millionaire. And, and I began to pray. <laughs> And I can remember praying, and I wasn't even praying long. An old boy started to cry. And it made me want to take my prayer up to second gear. Because I thought, I, thought, I thought the Holy Spirit on me was affecting him. Because tears were rolling down his face. And the loud, I began to pray louder and stronger and longer. And he began to pray louder. He began to cry louder and louder and louder. And when we finished, here's what he said. He said, I've never touched a black person before. He said, I've never held the hand of a black person. And I was thinking, bruh, you missing out. <laughs> Do you know how many pretty sisters? Seriously, there are? Better get you a sister, brother. <laughs> I got jungle fever. You got to get in proximity to touch somebody. Man, I'm afraid, April, the church, we don't get in proximity. We love the building. We love being in the building. What are we doing them other six days? What are we doing racially? Who have you touched that don't look like you lately? Don't tell me you love me if you don't touch me. I want you to touch me. Here's the thing. Here's the problem I have with me and that friend. I, if I could talk to him today, I would say to him, don't just touch me in times of prayer. Touch me in times of pain. Yeah. Touch me when I am lumped up like this guy in the text. Touch me when I'm bruised. Touch me when I'm wounded. Touch me, touch me, touch me when the cops stop me and I don't know why. Touch me then. Touch me. <laughs> when I look at the text, and I, I thought about it all week, the Samaritan had to get low to touch him. That's the problem, isn't it? We ain't willing to get low. We ain't willing to get low with somebody that doesn't look like us. I'm talking to church in America. I'm talking about our, our history. I'm not mad. I'm just, it's just history. The Samaritan got low, and, and, and I thought about it. What did he touch? He touched blood. What did he touch? He touched a mess. He touched near death. And that's what I need you to touch. Hey, if we're going to do this thing called reconciliation, we got to be willing to touch the bad stuff. I need you to touch uh, the little bit of bigotry that I got left in me. I need you to touch me anyway. Uh, I, I, I'm going to need to touch some people whose grandma and grandpa taught them some crazy stuff racially. I need to go and touch them anyway. Anybody in here, grandma and grandpa and daddy, they taught you some crazy stuff? If we won't touch people, we're loving in the abstract. This is a great concept. Looks good on your church bumper sticker. But I want us to be a church that touches people. I'm not just talking racially. I want us to touch gay people. 
That's not in my notes, but, but, I, but I, won't. I guess what I'm saying is if somebody has a pulse, we need to be touching them with love. Number two, <laughs> uh, it's a good chance that you're loving in the abstract. Number one, if there's no touch. Number two, if there's no treasure. If there's no treasure. If you don't spend money on me, don't tell me you love me. Are you kidding me? Uh, 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 man, if I, I've been married 23 years and it's cost me, I done spent so much money. It ain't cost me, but I want to spend it. I want to spend it. Don't tell, don't tell me, hey, I, I said this the first service, some dude in here, you lost your girlfriend because you was cheap. Come on, McDonald's again. Can I submit to you that the church, when it comes to racial stuff, we've been cheap. <laughs> we won't pay the price. <laughs> and I would even submit to you that the reason we have the racial problem in America in the first place, money. Money. Because if you go back to European imperialism, it's all about money. It's about getting this country built for cheap or free. And so what I'll do as a European imperialist is I'll take the indentured servants and I'll take the African slaves and I'll pit them against each other. I, 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 and I'll make them both work hard, but I'll call one group white, I'll call the other group black, and the group that's white, they'll be with me. They'll both work hard, and I'll get my country built for little or no money. Little or no money. That's just our history. I'm not mad. What I don't want with this series for my Caucasian brothers and sisters is for y'all to be scared that I'm just going to be mad. But what I also don't want is I got to preach the truth, not just the biblical truth, but contextual truth. Here's what I found. When you find ravaging sin, systemic sin, typically you can find money somewhere attached to it. You find a crooked preacher, you better believe somewhere in money. <laughs> you find a corrupt government, you better believe somewhere money. You go to dig wells in Africa and you see corrupt governments, you better believe somewhere it's a money thing. If you won't spend your money on somebody, it's a chance that you're just loving them in the abstract. Look at verse 35. This Samaritan said, on the next day uh, when he departed, this Samaritan took two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him. He gave two days wages to pay for somebody's health who probably hated him. He didn't ask for recompense. He didn't ask to be repaid. But he, hear me, he gave absolutely free health care to his enemy. And never asked to be repaid. He gave him Samaricare. And hear me, you're spending money on a dude who if he wakes up, he would hate you. If he could look in your eyes, he might tell you, don't touch me. But when you're committed to real love, you'll do that. Hey, I said this to the launch team when we were launching the factory over three years ago. I won't say the exact words. I said some of y'all were there. Tracy, you were there. We had about 50 people in a house. And I used the real word, the N-word. I won't do that today. But I said this. And faces turned red. I said, hey, if y'all call me the N-word, I'm going to still love you. I'm committed to racial reconciliation. You can't do anything to me to stop me from loving you, Rob. Nothing. And you haven't, by the way. Dude told me how to golf. But you can call me names. I, I'm going to love you because I can't control you. I only start worrying when I change. He, he, he paid took out two days worth of money uh, uh, and paid. Here's the thing, uh, there's a high price to pay for loving people. But there's an even higher price to pay for not loving people. 
And I submit to you that today our country is in the state that it's in because we're paying a high price for 400 years of not loving people that look differently than us. I'm talking to church. Yeah. And we're paying the price today. I mean, how are you going to have Christian slave owners? We're paying the price for that today. How, how are you going to love white people and still be a black panther? How? We're paying for that today. And I believe with all my heart, God has called the factory to be just a piece of the answer. If we'll stay together, if we'll stick together, if we won't get mad at each other, I'm going to say some stuff, not just this series. My goal is to say some stuff that'll make you mad. That's my goal. Because I want repentance. You don't, have, you don't have to like me, but I want you to repent. I want you to change. All I care about when it comes to all of y'all is y'all make it into heaven. And hear me, in heaven, the black folk ain't going to have a section. They ain't going to happen. And the white folk ain't going to have a section. No, no, no. Matter of fact, in heaven, ain't going to be no black and white. It's going to be redeemed. It's going to be people. We ain't going to be caring about what color you are. I'm going to be too busy praising God. We're paying a price today because as a church in America, we've been stingy with our love. Doesn't that sadden you? The one thing that you can give for free, love, we refuse to do it. And we're paying for it now. The price is too high to pay. You know how we're paying, paying for it, Patricia? We have kids who learn voluntary segregation. Guess where they learned it? Church. You want to talk about a place that's still, still segregated? Church. If you want to, you can come to my house tonight. We'll get in the Lex. It was given to me. It's old. It's not new. The Jeep is coming. But you can get in the car with me. We can drive down to a nice club in Buckhead. I'll take off my factory shirt. We'll go up in the club. And guess what you'll see in the club? White folk, black folk, Latin folks, dropping it, dropping it, dropping it. That's what you'll see. That's what you'll see. They dropping it to guys that can't even rap. No Nas, no Method Man. They, they, they dropping it to Lil Yachty. Because the club knows how to do racial reconciliation. Hey, 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 anybody, 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 I talk about weed too much. I've never smoked weed in my life. But anybody ever smoked weed with somebody who was a different color than you? You took it and what did you do? I've never heard y'all be that loud before. It and then hurry up and give it back. <laughs> hey, hey, but let's get serious for a minute. How can how can you smoke weed with me <laughs> and won't serve God with me? we go in and put our little money together for a dime bag <laughs> but you can't put your money together to help somebody who's broken guys the factory is here for that You're loving in the abstract. Number one, if there's no touch. Number two, if there's no treasure. Number three, if there's no time. Oh, I love my wife. I love her. Been married 23 years, dated seven years. But how many of you know Carlton? <laughs> I love you. How many of you know that if I call her day after day and say, honey, I'm not coming home. I'm going to go and stay at work. If I keep doing that and don't give her time, what kind of love is that? 
You got to give people time. My favorite part of this text uh, is found in the second part of verse 35. The Samaritan said, now he's already given two days worth of wages. He's already given. He's already paid a price. But he says to the innkeeper, whatever more you spend, here it is, when I come again. I'm coming back. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you some more time. I will repay you. He already let him spend the night with them. Now he's saying, I'm committed to you beyond today. I'm, I, I got some stuff to do. I got some errands to run, but I'm coming back. I got some cousins to see. I got some places to go, but I'm coming back. Why? Because I'm committed for the long term. The one thing that we haven't done racially in the church in America has just been committed to each other through hell or high water. That's not just racially. Church people, man, we don't know commitment anymore. Some people, after last week, they mad at me. They won't come back because they don't know commitment. Commitment, you can get mad at somebody and you stay. Anybody in here married? Sometimes as a black guy, I struggle with being committed. I have in the past, not anymore. I struggle with being committed with white people because they frustrated me. I need you to amen. Yo, Jeff, if you're going to sit on this front row as a, as a child, I need you to amen. amen. Say amen. 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 Say God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. And all the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. That's your job. <laughs> Sometimes I get frustrated. In the past, I've been frustrated with white people. When I was in college, the cops stopped me and my boys all the time for no reason. And then I would get to my Christian college and say, I just got stopped again. And they would always say stuff like, you had to do something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came from a black woman. That's what I did. And when I would get back and tell my white Christian friends and they wanted to find what I did wrong, you know what? I didn't want to give them my time. The older key says, no matter what happens, I'm going to give you my time. Any black people in here, you haven't given white people your time because you're frustrated with them. Yeah, don't raise your hand. Oh, okay. My man, my man, my honest guy. Any, any white people in here, you really do want to give us people of color your time, but man, it seems like we be mad all the time. You want to take a chance, but is you going to get your head bitten off? And, 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 and the white people, you, you scared to give time because you scared you're going to get told off again. You ain't never owned a slave. And, and one white person, be brave enough, just, just lift your hand. I want to meet with you after. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to be committed over time. Factory, I'm talking to the factory. We got to be committed even when we make each other mad. I got a sad story to tell. How many of you know you can't get time back? Somebody need, that's all you need from this sermon. Somebody, I'm not even talking racially, somebody wasting time. Somebody in this room got a calling on your life and you wasting time trying to please somebody. You can't get that time back. I'll be doggone if I'm gonna waste time. When I was in college, another college story. <laughs> I have a friend named Doug Miller. Anybody here for the elder installation a couple of weeks ago? Doug was the Anglo overseer. Brendan Loritz was the black overseer. Uh, and Doug, in 1988, when my first day at the college, I was a transfer student, I'm sitting in a classroom, and ain't now other black person in there. And, and that, so I'm feeling awkward, because that's how we think, right? And Doug walks in. And I look at him when he walks through the door, and I did not like him. Rob, he hadn't done nothing to me. I was just like, you know what, something about him. He, every, every piece of his hair was in place. He had on the cool Don Johnson Miami Vice shoes. And I just made up my mind, I don't like him. Here's 
the problem. He walked in late and plopped down right beside me. And he's, he didn't say hello. He said, man, I love the part in your hair. Yeah, I had a Will Smith part. And then the next day he came back and he said, because I was a commuter student, he says, I want you to come to my room because you don't have anywhere to rest during the day. You can rest in my room. That started a brotherhood. He's my overseer today. Please hear me. The factory wouldn't be without Doug. I know God did it. Don't get spiritual on me. But he used Doug. I didn't say this the first service. When I quit my other job, I didn't know where I was going to get money from. The very next day, I called Doug and said, I resign. I'm going to plant a church. The first thing he said was, do you have a computer? Nope, you got one now. Do you have an iPad? Nope, you got one now. Uh, I, and, and hear me, the PA system that we, that, that we had, Doug called me before we launched. He says, you're going to need a good PA system. He paid, his church paid for everything. I need you to know here this though. We were friends, man, for like three years in college, like brothers. <sighs> but it's just something in me that likes stirring it up. So I asked him because he stood in chapel one day, told the whole chapel he loved me. I knew he was telling the truth. So I started asking him, okay, Doug, uh, so could I date your sister? <laughs> I had never met his sister, but if you really love me, uh, how would you feel about having some little mixed nephews and nieces? <laughs> could, could I date your sister? I had never met her. Year one, I would ask him. Year two, year three, and he did everything but really answer me. He would talk about grandma, and grandpa would be mad. Dog, I'm asking you. So you know what I decided to do? Bump Doug. Anybody ever done that? Cut people off? I ain't giving Doug my time. He can't even answer a simple question. I could ask my black friends questions. I'm gonna hang with my black friend. They'll let me date their sister. I can't date Becky, but I can date Brenda. So I cut Doug off for 10 years. I didn't talk to him. I don't want that kind of a friendship. That's, that was my justification because we can always justify. My fiance would say, call Doug because she loved Doug. She knew Doug was a good friend. Call him. I don't want to call Doug. When I was engaged to get married and I finally got married, she says, call Doug. Invite him to the wedding. I don't want Doug at my wedding. So Doug missed my wedding because I had to be right. When we had our first kid, Jayla, I, 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 I called other friends. I didn't call Doug. Ten years went by, and I got a job at our alma mater. Guess what my job was? Ethnic diversity director. I taught people how to reconcile racially, but I wasn't doing it. How many know that's called fake? That's called hypocrisy. Ten years, and I was teaching people about their racial issues, fussing at people. Ten years go by, and I'm at a football game. I'm praying for the football team before the game. I'm walking up into the box to pray, and I see two white guys running at me. That is never a good thing. <laughs> and they tackle me, and it's Doug and his brother. And I go up and pray, and when I come down, Doug said, let's go to your office and talk. I don't think we watched a minute of the game. We sat in my office. He said, I'm sorry. I said, no, I'm sorry. He said, forgive me. I said, no, forgive me. And we talked, and I missed 10 years. Because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to give somebody time. You got to earn it with me. I'm not like Jesus. You ain't got to earn it with him, but with me, you got to earn it. Anybody in here, you, any, 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 any black person, you trying to make white people dance for you? Because of what they did to our forefathers? Any, 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 any black person, anybody, anybody, you want to make them dance. You want to turn them into Sam and Davis because they got to prove to you that you can trust them. Anybody, any, anybody. <laughs> Time. 
victory, God has called us here so we can be committed to each other long term. Amen. I don't care who gets elected. The fact is we got to stay together, right? Yeah. I don't care what the world is saying about Confederate flags and monuments and the American flag and Kaepernick. I I'm talking about the factory. I'm talking about disciples. I'm talking about Christians. Hell or high water, we got to stay together. Are we going to always agree? Absolutely not. But I'm committed over time. Hey, white people, Latin people, Asian people, I'm committed to y'all until I die. Black folk, y'all know we. <laughs> Wrapping up. The lawyer in the story, and he was trying to find a loophole. That's why he was asking these crazy questions. Uh, he, I, li I like to say what he was doing is this. He was being cleverly obtuse. <laughs> uh, I think one of the many reasons that the church in America has not loved in actuality but only in abstract is because uh, we've been cleverly obtuse when it comes to race. What does that mean? Conveniently dumb, blissfully ignorant, willfully ignorant. You know, when the race stuff comes up, we just turn the channel. When stuff comes up racially that we don't want to see, we, we, we just turn the channel. How in the world do you justify certain things that the church in America has done? Because they've chosen to change the channel. Don't have to watch it. Said this the first service. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to get in trouble. But I go home to Elberton, Georgia. I don't know if I ever told y'all I was from Elberton. <laughs> I go home once a month or once every other month, and every time I go home, I'm troubled by one thing. Before I get to my parents' house on Athens Highway, I pass New Doves Creek Church. It's a black church, whatever that means. New Doves Creek. Not even two minutes later, on the same road is Doves Creek. The white church, same name, one of them is New Doves Creek, one of them is Doves Creek. Here's the thing, how did that happen? Racism. And we don't want to talk about our history, we'd rather be cleverly obtuse. Hear me, there was a time I couldn't have gone in a white church and sat, not to mention preach. I'm not trying to make people feel guilty. What I want you to see is we got to deal with that. We can't be cleverly obtuse with the truth. You can't want me to forget certain history, but want me to remember 9-11. Because I think both are worthy. You should never forget 9-11, but you can never forget that the church dropped the ball. How are you going to have a First Baptist Church and a Second Baptist Church in the same doggone town? Don't tell me not to preach about race. Don't tell me what to preach. We got a problem. Still. And we want to be cleverly obtuse, blissfully ignorant. Trayvon Martin gets shot. We don't want to deal with it. The church needs to be the one that's dealing with this crap. Us. I just refuse to be a punk. I can't do it. Ain't nothing punk about me. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk about race. We're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about whatever the Bible talks about. Whatever it talks about. Hell or high water. I ain't going to shut up. To talk to the priest, I would ask the priest, come on, bruh, how you justify what you did? And I bet you he would say something like, hey, man, it was dangerous on that road. I was worried about myself. And I would, I would look at him in his face and say, nah, you were just cleverly obtuse. Yeah, yeah. 
If I could have talked to the Levite, I would be like, how could you neglect a half-dead person? And he would probably say, you know what? I was worried that the thieves were still there. And by the way, he was already pretty much dead. There's nothing I could do to help. And I would say, you lying. You're just being cleverly obtuse. Hey, American church, how in the world do you justify slavery? God, you, you do it by doing it cleverly, obtusely. You don't call them people. You call them three-fifths people. Now you can get away with it. You don't call them natives. You don't call them natives. You call them savages. Now I can feel good when I turn the channel. <laughs> Hey, 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 you hate them because you can justify what they did to your forefathers. I ain't got to like them. I can be cleverly obtuse. And I can always bring up slavery. I can always reach in my pocket and pull that one out. Anybody in here tired of being blissfully ignorant? Man, I got a wife. I hate that I keep using you. I want to know everything about you. Everything. All I want you to do is wake up in the morning. Tyler Perry. I want to know everything I can know about you. I don't care what your color is. We can't justify certain things. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. We, 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 we have religious blissful ignorance. And religious blissful ignorance has created racial insensitivity. Hear me. What the priest did was egregious. But it was expected. What he did was harsh. Yet it was very human. It's what the culture did. Sounds like the church to me. It's what the culture did. Here's the problem. When the church walks more within the culture than it does within its calling, we send mixed messages and we leave people half dead. The church has been walking in the culture and not in the calling. I don't care about the culture. I don't care what the culture says. I know what my calling is. My calling was never to plant a black church. My calling is to open a church where anybody can come. I don't care what the culture says. I don't care if people call me a sellout. I've been called a sellout to my face by black pastors. Do you think I care when I got this book? Are you going to walk in the culture or are you going to walk in your calling? Amen. Which one? Amen. Put Fox News down. Put CNN down. Get in this book. Yes. 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 So I'm giving you a homework assignment. Homework assignment is simple. I want you to read this book called Divided by Faith. It's not a new book. I read it years ago. Divided by Faith. And it shows you how we're divided by faith, <laughs> racially. And here's what I want you to get from the book. Let's not resemble the culture. Let's assemble the culture. Let's not copy it. Let's create it. Otherwise, we leave people half dead. The priest and the Levite represent what? Religion. Here's the thing that you need to know. Religion leaves people half dead. Racism in the church leaves people half dead. Bigotry in the church leaves people half dead. Nationalism in the church? Man, we got, half, we got 400 years of half dead people. <laughs> got one question and we out of here. You can take your keyboard. Can I ask you a question? The saddest part of the text, the dude was left half dead. Can I ask one question? Do you even know how to recognize a half dead person? To my Anglo brother, sometimes when you see a dude that looks similar to me, his pants sagging and he rapping about some crazy stuff and his teeth shining, and he looks scary, and you label him a thug? Can, can, I, can I suggest that you look through that? And if you keep looking, if you listen to his lyrics, you'll notice he ain't a thug, he's half dead. Who else would rap calling a woman a bee or hoe unless you half dead? To my black and Latin people of color, when you look at a Richard Spencer or the alt-right or white supremacists, 
look at them just as prejudiced people. Look through that and say, nah, even though Richard Spencer wears a suit, I see that he's half dead. When you see that he's half dead, now you can't justify mistreating him. Now you got a job to do. Man, I got a job to do. And it ain't just on Sunday. Man, I got a job to do every day. I love loving people that don't love me. I love it because it drives them crazy. Anybody with me? You're going to love people that don't love you? In the text, verse 36, uh, Jesus says, hey, which one of these three, I'm paraphrasing, did the right thing? Which one of these three was a neighbor? <laughs> and the lawyer, guess what he didn't say? What's the answer? The Samaritan, he didn't say that. Why? He was filled with hate. Can't even bring the word out of his mouth. There's some people in here, you can't even bring Colin Kaepernick's name out your mouth without losing your religion. <laughs> There's some people in here, you cannot bring Donald Trump's name out his mouth. You call it in 45 and you be right, he ain't my president, he your president. <laughs> Word, Pastor. And we're supposed to respect them. <laughs> Three people agree with me. I'm working on the other 98%. Oh, but guess what? We should respect Kaepernick too. Dude couldn't get the word Samaritan out of his mouth. Jesus says, go do likewise. Factory, can we go do likewise? Thank you. Can we go do likewise? Can we stop turning the channel Amen. and get dialed in into one thing, love? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. During the election, the next election, it's coming soon. Four years will be here before you know it. Let's get dialed in to love. When the Confederate flag stuff comes up or the American flag stuff comes up, let's say on one channel. What's the channel? Love. Because simple and plain, love Love is the answer. 